Hey everyone, welcome back to another PNSO review. Today we're taking a look at Harvey the Iguanodon. It's been a hot minute since I reviewed any PNSO figures on the channel. Not gonna lie, I did enjoy the break while well, my wallet did at least, but now they're back to making dinosaurs again, so I guess the saving money is now out the window. Now I end up getting this figure from PNSO's AliExpress store. It retails for $59.99. And I found it much better to order from them on AliExpress because if you order from, you know, PNSO directly on Amazon, you know, you get whacked between like $10 and $15 shipping. But if you order through their AliExpress store, it's free shipping. So it's kind of a no-brainer just to go through their AliExpress site. So I'll leave a link to that down below in the description. So let's just go over the packaging for Harvey really quick. It comes in the Dinosaur Museum style packaging, which is this nice white box with a beautiful picture of Harvey on the front of it. And then on the top of the box, you got the PNSO logo, Dinos Museum, Harvey the Iguanodon 135 scientific art model, and then, you know, nothing on the back. Product information on the side, you know, more information on the side of the box. But just like all the Dinos Museum figures, you do get a nice booklet with some artwork of Iguanodon in it. Let's, you know, deal with the glare from my lights as we just thumb through this really really quickly a lot of information in this book you know this is very similar to the book that came with the uh, Mementi you know it's meant to set up the Iguanodon like an educational display in the art room you can get some nice pictures of the Iguanodon and then you do get an absolute ton of stuff in the box you get the same giant envelope with the uh, sticker it's the skull of the Iguanodon and inside this thing is an absolute metric ton of artwork and I'm gonna take these out and set them up so we can take a quick look at them because there's some beautiful beautiful artwork inside this box so let's start with round one of these posters these are all the ones related to Iguanodon in the envelope first up is a nice modern reconstruction along with the old school reconstruction and a couple size comparisons to Baryonyx and Megalosaurus and then over here we have a nice full art picture of Harvey I think that absolutely looks great and then down here we have Iguanodon's hand along with the thumb claw and we also have another picture of Harvey. So this is all meant to be like an exposition uh, for the classroom. So you know, teachers can set it up, you know, help kids learn about dinosaurs. Pretty cool concept but it definitely is a lot of fluff and we also have a lot more posters to go over. And for the next round of posters we have Stegosaurus through the years. Spinosaurus down here we have a two-part poster with the young Tyrannosaurus and the adult I don't see Andrea's fat ass anywhere and for the last of the large posters we have Patagotitan, Euteranus, Centaurosaurus and this is the first of the smaller posters Borrelia Pelta and for round three yes we are almost done we have a bunch of smaller posters of other species of dinosaurs we have Archaeopteryx, Megalosaurus, Cynoceropteryx, Microraptor, Oviraptor, Lophangosaurus, and Edmontosaurus. And down here is Eoraptor. And we also get these cards that go with the posters, you know, for, you know, the educational learning plan that, you know, PNS will design for the classroom. So all this stuff is really cool. The artwork is gorgeous. But I think I'm speaking for most of us here. You know, we're going to look at it quick and we're going to put in the envelope and stay in the box and we're never ever going to look at these again. I would love to hang all these up in my house, but then I'll be living on the street because my wife would throw me out. So yeah, a lot of us are not going to use this stuff and all this really does is just drive up the cost of the figure. I think if this wasn't included, this would probably be around like a $40 something figure. So yeah, you do have to keep that in mind that when you get these figures now, you are getting a lot of extra fluff that you're probably not going to use. And finally, moving on to the main event, the whole reason you're here, here is Harvey in all his 360 degree glory. And I think PNSO did a phenomenal job with this figure. Iguanodon in real life was a big bulky animal and this figure perfectly captured that. This is a big beefy meaty figure. And I just think it looks absolutely great. Now it doesn't say anywhere on the vast, vast amount of paperwork that you get with this figure, but it's clearly based on the type species, Iguanodon bernersartensis. And now for the paint job, you know, that's a lot of people's biggest complaint about PNS, so they're not the best with their paint apps. But I think this color scheme works on this figure. It's mostly a dark gray with a little bit of brown thrown in there. They have these white stripes all along the body. And since the Guanadon, you know, is a prey animal, it would probably have a color scheme similar to this to break up its pattern uh, from predators trying to hunt it down. 
so yeah, I really, really like this thing. Uh, you know, I love the Collecti Iguanodon. I think it's one of the best Iguanodon figures ever made. But I think it's now been dethroned by PNSO's offering. I still love the Collecti one, but this is going to be my uh, de facto Iguanodon on my shelf for the time being. And now for a couple of quick measurements. This figure is just shy of 11 inches long and three and a half inches tall to the top of the head. So Guanadon in real life is around 33 feet long. So I'll put this figure in the 136 scale range. So if you collect 135 scale, I think you found your perfect Guanadon. All right, let's zoom and take a look at some of the finer details on Harvey, starting with the head. Now I've heard some people complain that the head on this figure looks a little too long to be a guanodon, but when you line up the skull with the figure itself, you can see that it is pretty much a perfect match. I think the issue was, you know, PNSO sculpted this figure without cheeks. I think a lot of us are just not used to seeing a Nittishayans without cheeks, and you know, have this really, really long mouth, and I just think that just gives the illusion of the head being a lot longer, but as you clearly see, it does match up pretty perfectly with the skull reconstruction. You can see all this really, really fine scale detail. You know, there's not a lot of texture on this figure, but I think the scales are done nicely. You know, PNSO sometimes does oversized scales, and I think they really hit the right balance on this figure. They're not too big, they're not too small. I think they're just right. You can see the eye is painted a bright orange with a black pupil. The beak has some rusty uh, paint on it. You can see the nostrils clearly sculpted in, and let's look at it from the front. Now, the head does look a little um, narrow. That's because they decided not to include cheeks on here. And, you know, PNSO is going really, really hard in the paint lately. You know, reconstruction all their figures with a, uh, lips. And now we're getting no cheeks on these type of dinosaurs. Come on, camera, focus in. It really doesn't bother me. I'm sure there's probably some kind of membrane inside the mouth to stop all that food from spilling out while Iguanodon was feeding. And let's look at the head from the top. As you can see, it is very narrow and it's so narrow, my camera just absolutely hates focusing on the head. And let's turn it over and look at the underneath. You have some nice dry brushing along the throat to bring out all those nice folds and wrinkles. And then going down to the neck, you can see all that nice white striping. You have a large row of scales that starts right at the top of the head and they get bigger as you go down the back and they go all the way down to the very very tip of the tail and then going down to the main body you can see all those really fine scale details you know some of the first in hand pictures of the state it looked very plain but once you get it in hand you can see it is a beautifully textured figure and now going down to those really beefy and muscular forearms i think they did a great job on this you know these three fingers right here were the weight bearing fingers you can see the prehensile uh pinky finger on here and you can see the classic iguanodon thumb spike and the forearms on iguanodon were about 75 percent the length of the legs and i think they did a pretty good job of capturing that and then going down to the main body you can see more of that white stripe and a little bit of light brown paint mixing in with all this dark gray going down to the hind legs some more beautiful muscle detail and then going down to the hind legs you can see the toe claws are painted in a glossy brown and then turn the figure over you get a nice wide belly with some more nice scale details and all that dry brush and bringing out all that detail and then looking at the figure from the top you can see a nice wide belly and some very thick hips and a very thick tail base on here and then turn it over let's do our dinosaur boho check uh i gotta say it it is probably my favorite cloaca uh slit on a figure that is really really accurate looking so yeah i know i'm a freak i i can't help it and then going down to the tail you can see more all of that fine scale detail and all that nice white striping so yeah they did a really really great job with this figure and i just love uh the sculpt like how it's conveying motion of the iguana on walking like with the hind feet and the front uh arms lifted up as it's walking so yeah pretty cool figure like i said uh it's probably one of my favorite PNSO uh, releases uh, from 2021, and I think this little figure just crept its way onto my top 10 dinosaur figure list, which I will be releasing uh, sometime this month. 
And now moving on with comparisons, let's compare it to some other Iguanodon figures. First up is the old Invicta Iguanodon, and we've come a really long way over the years. You know, such a different looking animal now. It's much beefier, you know, walks primarily on four legs, but I still love this uh, Invicta Iguanodon. And this little figure right here, like quick little story, um, has been through a lot. I lost this thing when I was a kid. I think I got it maybe when I was like five or six years old. And I lost, I was playing outside with my dinosaur figures and I actually found it like 15 years later, like buried in the bushes in my mom's backyard. So this thing has uh, seen a lot of weather up here in New England and it still looks good as new. It just, you know, a, a test to how durable these Invicta figures are. And next up is the old Carnegie Collection Guanadon. And here is Papo's, you know, Aldar impression Iguanodon and speaking of Papo man have they come become really irrelevant uh, over the last couple of years uh, there's just so many companies doing it better than them and you know it's kind of sad to see like I, I was not impressed with what they showing off this year I think maybe the only thing I might pick up is the Styracosaurus because I really like that figure I think it's a nice paint job but they they're just really not doing anything they're like an afterthought in a lot of people's minds right now and next up is Safari Limited's Iguanodon, which I still think is a great figure, but this PNSO one definitely blows this one away. And let's take out the Stellar Collecte Iguanodon. Like I said, this is like one of my favorite uh, Collecte figures of all time, and you know, it's been on my display shelf ever since it came out. But I think it got dethroned by the PNS one right here. I still love this figure, but uh, yeah, definitely found a replacement. And they're both very, very similar in size. You can see that both of them are right around that you know 135 scale. The collecting one is just a little bit longer. And let's just do a couple more Iguanodons. There's actually quite a few Iguanodon figures. Here is uh, the Kyoto one, and I love using this one. I always use it as a juvenile. I'm displaying it with my uh, collecting one. And let's do the Collecte Mentillisaurus. And this is not a figure, but I actually do have a cast of Iguanodon's Thumb Spike. And let's do a few dinosaurs that lived alongside Iguanodon. Here is Safari's Baryonyx and Collecte's Neovenatar. I'd love to see uh, PNSO do their version of Baryonyx. I mean, technically it was hinted. It's on the post that came with this figure. And let's move these two guys out of the way and let's do the Walk with Dinosaurs Toyway Polycanthus. And here is Papo's Polycanthus. And let's just do a few PNSO figure comparisons. Here it is with their Spinosaurus. Uh, there's a rumor going around that maybe PNSO might be making a larger version of this species. And the other rumor is I really, really hope that Acrocanthosaurus. Uh, rumor is true that is one of my favorite theropods of all time I'd love to get a definitive uh, version of that species and next up here it is with their stegosaurus and lastly you can't do PNSO comparisons without comparing it next to Wilson so final thoughts I think this iguanodon turned out absolutely fantastic it is one of my favorite releases from PNSO in 2021 and it's definitely going to be on my display shelf for a very long time. Love how it's pretty much a perfect 135 scale. A lot of people collect that uh, scale including me so it's going to fit nicely into a lot of people's collections and it's just a big bulky beefy figure and I think it's the best Iguanodon figure out there right now. You know the only negative on this figure is the price. It is a $60 figure and that's primarily because you do get a lot of fluff with this figure, all those posters and stuff. And I kind of just wish, you know, PNS will kind of go away from that and, you know, just keep striving up the prices of figures. And, you know, $60 is a lot of money to spend on a figure this size. But since I like it so much, it's a little easier to swallow. But uh, that's going to get old really fast with these, you know, big stacks of posters just piling up in our, our closets. So, yeah, that's just something to take into consideration before you get this figure. You're going to get a lot of stuff you're not going to use. And like I said at the beginning of the review, I got this from PNSO's AliExpress store. The link to that is down below in the description. So that would do it for the review. Um, weirdly, I ordered the uh, PNSO Triceratops like well over a week before this one came out. 
and that one still hasn't come in yet it, it cleared customs but who knows where it is it's probably stuck in like you know customs limbo that you know happens to me from time to time we all know what happened when i got that uh pnso carithosaurus it sat in custom for like two months went back to china and then came back it took like four months for me to get that so uh once that triceratops comes in i will be reviewing that i still got work on my uh you know top 10 dinosaur figures of last year i should have that video up probably by the weekend so stay tuned for those reviews and as always if you're enjoying the content on this channel show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and it's greatly appreciated and i'll see you guys for the next one